we're Simon and Elaine. If you're followers of our channel, you'll know that we love Scotland. In this new series, we're attempting to drive Scotland's Southwest 300 in a camper van. This route is located in a quiet corner of Scotland, in the southwest area. It heads through the Dumfries and Galloway region and Ayrshire. Join us on the highs and lows of this new adventure. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Good morning, somewhere on the M6. <laughs> Our bags are packed and we're heading up to the lakes to pick up a camper van. We've just hired this amazing camper van, <laughs> but we got here later and we really wanted to. So we're going to really chicken out now and just go to a really local campsite so we can just. What time is it? Like six o'clock and we're hungry. We're really tired. And we're so high. Hello. Up, aren't we? Look at this. Where are we going? Left. So welcome to our camper van for the next week. We haven't driven very far from where we've hired it um, because it's a lot later in the day than what we have planned. The plan was to have been in Scotland by seven o'clock this evening. Well, it's now, what time is it? It's about half past six and we're still in the Lake District because it's taken us a long time to get here. But we're here, uh, the chap who's hired us the camper van had recommended a campsite for the night not far away so uh, we've parked up at the campsite can't see much of it because it's dark so we're going to set her down for the evening see you in a bit good morning from kendall in the lake district it's about nine o'clock in the morning and now we're going to head up to scotland southwest scotland that's the whole idea of this next seven days we're going to do the southwest 300 I think it's still a relatively new route for explorers who want to venture around Scotland. But this is the southwest part. Imagine the United Kingdom and the chin sticking out. We're doing that part around Dumfries and Galloway. So this is our van for the week. Largest van we've ever hired. So I've got to treat it with care. <laughs> Wish me luck. Scotland. The castle once guards an important gateway into the kingdom. On arrival we had to squeeze the camper van through that archway. We made it. Just about. There's the castle.
heading into Dunfries. Nice little estuary to our left. Right, we have just parked in Dunfries. I thought we'd stop for a short while and walk over the bridge, over the river. one of the oldest standing bridges in Scotland. It's here in Dumfries. Drumburn viewpoint. Skador in the Lake District is over there. We wore that last year or so. We've liked it so much at this spot we have decided to reverse and park up here for the night because it is a stunning view. Absolutely stunning. Can watch the sun go down. Twenty to seven. Oh, and the moon is making an appearance as well. And a very good morning. About eight o'clock in the morning on the southwest coast of Scotland. See my breath. Had the car parked to ourselves last night. Peaceful night. And we're ready for a brand new day. Day two in the big van. It's now 9.30. 
Zup. Welcome to Rockcliffe. We're there. Yeah, Imagine if this was your front garden. <laughs> That's amazing. Toilets in Rockcliffe don't look much, but the inside is actually very, very good. So this is a nice little walk just round the back of Rockcliffe. Squeeze in. This beach is just a wash with shells. Lovely properties by this beach. Owned, rented out, who knows? But they're lovely. So all this is the Solway Firth. Very pretty. Oh yeah, there's lots of funny faces. There's one funny face. Oh yes, that's a funny face. We walked along the Firth and we're now at Kipford. We take the Jubilee path back to Rockcliffe and back to the van. Who would have thought we'd be having? We're on our holidays though. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Beautiful day.
Leave the door open. Pin oh, man to <laughs> ladder. Oh. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> For lunch. Have lunch, cup of tea. Have to wash up occasionally. And then we're heading on in. Just gone three o'clock. We've stopped in Wick Town. Uh, Wick Town is like a market town. A, a book market town, it's renowned for book festivals. But it's Sunday, everywhere's closed, but we thought we'd stop because we are quite tired. Stretch our legs. Books. Books. And guess what? Books. <laughs> you can turn a green box into a bookshelf. Grand shop. We've virtually got Wig Town to ourselves today. It's a cool looking cafe. It's a bookshop cafe. Surprise, surprise. Over there is Wig Town's Town Hall. It's big. Hello! Even treating ourselves to a book. Buying a book in Wigtown. I love that sign. Give us the money here. <laughs> We're basically in a field at the back of a pub. I have to use the ramps because it's on a bit of a slope, but that's alright. We're at Whithorn. That's where we are. We're at the Isle of Whithorn. Tomorrow we're heading for there. Is that where we're going to stay? That's where we're going to stay tomorrow, definitely. Then. Yeah. Okay. Those are the toilet facilities. Just to doubly make sure we're allowed to park here. Overnight parking only allowed in the field. Well, hey. Look at that. The lady in the bookshop recommended this spot as well. Whithorn Pilgrim Way. Swim anybody? Just saying how calm the waters are here tonight. The yeah, camper van. Part of the motorhome clan. Ooh. So you can see the route of the southwest coast we've done so far. Over there is the Isle of Man, and we think in the very far distance over there is Wales. And you can see all of that from here. We had to do a geography, we had to look at the maps to figure out where everything was. At one point we thought that was Ireland, it's not Ireland. Ireland's beyond the Isle of Man. Lovely place to stay tonight. After a long drive sometimes these things are just meant to be. The final place where you end up. over there is St Ninian's Chapel. This was built in the 1100s, almost a thousand years ago.
just had a dinner and this is the view from the back of our van. Good morning, the sun is rising on a Monday morning. Time to get up. Tired is out. And now we're leaving this lovely little place. Simon wants to go in a cave. First stop off. We're in the car park of St Ninian's Cave. Somewhere I'm very keen to visit. Because I do like a good cave. One mile to the cave. We are also the only ones here. Well, this is a lovely walk through the woods to get to the caves. And the sun shining through the trees as well. Glorious. It's lovely. Getting close to the coastline now. And hopefully the cave. Quarter of a mile. Oh, I guess that's the cave over there. this beach to ourselves and the cave. Not good. Area closed, danger of masonry fall. So just have to view the cave from here. So there you go, St Ninian's Cave. Dangerous spot at the moment. Stunning view from here though. Mull of Galloway Lighthouse, that's where we're going to stay tonight, which is way over there. So there you go, it says the Mull of Galloway Lighthouse sits on the sea cliff at Scotland's most southerly point. That's where we're heading. lunch at this lovely spot. Look at that. Have lunch then perhaps we'll wrap up and take a walk on this beach. That airplane I think is flying into Ireland. From way 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 way. Can you see my finger? No. <laughs> Somewhere over there if I'm pointing in the right place is the Mull of Galloway.
driven around Loose Bay and walked on the beach somewhere on the other side of the bay there and driven around to this side so quick cup of tea and we'll be on our way again Galloway, the most southerly point in Scotland, and we're going to stay here tonight. There's already a couple of vans here, but we're going to venture out to the lighthouse, aren't we, Lane? Yeah, <laughs> it's cold and windy, but hey. that we've got. That's amazing. You've got toilets here if needs be. You are standing on Scotland's most southerly point. It's a place on the edge surrounded by cliffs and views across to Northern Ireland, Cumbria and the Isle of Man. A circular route to the lighthouse. They go the long way round. standing at Lag Vag Point on the very edge of southern Scotland. If the sea ahead is raging with swirling currents then you are lucky enough to be experiencing the spectacular natural phenomenon of the nine tides.
good morning from a very, 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 very windy Mull of Galloway. We had to move the van a couple of times in the night because we were originally parked up top and it was so windy, so, so windy. So we drove down just a little bit further on the side here. It was a little bit more sheltered here. Still windy. Coastline's being battered by the waves. So this morning, I had one final look around the lighthouse and enjoyed a bit more of the coastline around here. So back to the van. And we're on our way to Port Logan. Very pretty and very quiet. We're going to walk on the pier next to the stone lighthouse. Steps. Oh, that was clever. Uh, <laughs> gotta have a look. Oh, it's nice and sheltered in here. There's a geocache. Not too tricky. Can you see the sea, Elaine? Yeah, I can see the sea. A tiny bit of blue sky.
crashing waves. So, we've parked in the town of Stranray, right, Stranray? <laughs> we've parked in the town of Stranray, Stranray's visitor, visitor centre here. But we're going to walk to the nearby park. The ladies in the office said both car parks are completely free to park on here. So we've taken advantage of that. Today, the forecast for today was rain. And for the most part, it's not too bad at the moment. So, we're going to pronounce this Agnew Park. But if it's wrong, you see where I'm coming from. It could be Agnew Park. Apologies for mispronunciation. You have the power. Okay, we're now in the town centre in search of the Castle of St John. Poor George Hotel. Built in 1876. Wonder what that looked like in its day. Oh. How was this castle then? Mind your head, medieval tower house, Victorian prison. Hi. The castle was built in the early 1500s, and because of that, there's rumours that there's ghosts in this castle. <laughs> Waiting room. Which way now? <laughs> I'm a free man. Ooh. Up on the roof of the castle. Wow.
parked up in Gervan. A handful of other camper vans here. And they very well stay here for the evening. And opposite is the Isle of Arran. We were there a couple of years ago and had an amazing time, didn't we? We did. Covered in a bit of cloud at the moment. The highest mountain on the Isle of Arran is a place called Goatfell. You probably can't even see the top from here. Just notice the wind turbines just popping up from behind the hills. Good morning from a very sunny Gervan. Someone's abandoned a rubber duck. Cruelty to rubber ducks. Did we ever figure out what that item was called? Ailsa Crag. Ailsa Crag. Today's a bird sanctuary, providing home for a huge number of gannets and an increasing amount of puffins. Wow! The only surviving buildings on the islands are a lighthouse on its east coast facing the Scottish mainland. Yeah, I think and that's it in front. The island has a freshwater spring but no electricity, gas or sewerage or telephone connections. Gosh. Looks beautiful this morning. And in a moment, we're going to jump in our camper van and drive to air. Lane even has her gloves on. It's just to keep warm. Yeah. It's lovely. You want to be toasty. So we began our drive to air. Little did we know our journey was about to come to a halt. There's a bit of trouble with our van. The display says we've got too much oil in the engine. And the people we hired it from said that may be the case and if it came up on the dashboard to take it into a garage to be drained, hoping there was going to be a dipstick in this engine. And guess what? <laughs> it doesn't appear to be a dipstick. Never known that. But perhaps in these modern vans there isn't one. Elaine is just googling it to double check, but we're fairly certain. We spoke to a garage in air and he said if it's just a if the dipstick is just above maximum you should be alright. But if it's about a centimetre above maximum you get it checked. Hence the reason we wanted to check the dipstick. No dipstick. So we may have to take it to a garage. Such is. Okay, we've got a great view of Aaron and Holy Island. And a bin. <laughs> and a bin. We've just phoned several garages and they're either not picking up or picking up saying they don't have a ramp big enough or they can't book us in. And we've just found uh, another nice place in air. And on our behalf, uh, they're phoning a few garages in the area to see if they can book us in. If not, we've then got plan Z. We'll phone the camper van hire person, people. And our holiday will either then be cut short or we carry on driving around. We're halfway around now anyway, aren't we? We're halfway round. 
whichever way, if we drive back the way we came, it's probably going to be the same distance. So for the time being, we're just sitting tight and waiting for a phone call back from these garages in here. Having finally booked the van into a local garage for first thing in the morning, we thought we'd head into air itself. This is where we are the rest of the day. So they can have a look at the van tomorrow morning. But the rest of this afternoon, we're going to walk into Airtown. Right. The Lang Scott Smile. there. We're now walking on the beach. Oh no. Aaron's clouded. Aaron's now in the mist and the cloud. Heading back to the van. Settling down for the evening. <laughs> and ready for tomorrow. Whatever that will bring, eh? What will tomorrow bring? Yes. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Up early the next day, the garage were great, and all was sorted between them and the van owner. And in a short time, we were back on the road. Didn't know that either. Moffat Town Centre, Europe's first dark sky town. Ooh. Acres. 
Always like good bikers. Walking up the Glebe, and there's a there's a Spitfire. Looks if it's in someone's back garden. In fact, I'm sure it is. Is this somebody's house? This is now in someone's front garden. That's crazy. So you can make donations. So do you fancy having one of those in your front garden? Having completed the South West 300, we crossed back into England, found a campsite for the night. A quick brew in the morning, we were soon off to return our van and then head home. We hope you've enjoyed our southwest road trip. Please leave comments and any questions. And we'll see you on our next adventure.